This is Jeremiah. Welcome back to New Covenant. We do everything in one name here. There's one name given amongst men. That's it. We do everything in that name. We love the name. Today is an exciting day in this ministry, this service to Jesus Christ. This love servant to this perfect submission, complete submission, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Let's get going as we run through the gamut here and we uh, go from left to right and up and down and uh, we cover all quadrants. Positive and negative. Now we're looking at Grand Prix today. This is a, this is the end of the ministry. This signals the end of the ministry right now. And uh, in general, we got, I will still have videos available. I I will still have videos available here, but they won't be. They'll be few and far between. This ministry is just about closing down. It's very exciting to go through the, some of your books of the Bible for the last time, basically. Three or four years from now, we might go through it again, but that's a long, that, that's, a, that's a far in the, in the distant future, correct? That, uh, especially considering that the fig tree has blossomed and Israel has become a nation again. And this generation will not pass until everything in the tribulation period is complete. Okay, that means you're not far from the millennium. We have some millennium scriptures here in the Grand Prix, which basically is Isaiah, as many of you know. Isaiah is a book that gives you a lot of information pertaining to the 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ on the earth, basically as it is. Now, Grand Prix, why is that so exciting? Because it's the end of the ministry. We're, we're going to start giving scriptures and we're going to start sharing them and we're going to start focusing on a lot of the heavy hitters and then we're going to shut down, pretty much. I will have uh, popcorn here and bounce around uh, scriptural items. Maybe once a week here. So we got maybe one more year of this ministry, maybe less, where we basically shut down. Once you get to the book of Psalms, a little bit of Proverbs, Isaiah, and your New Testament, you're basically done with your Bible. As far as making a foundation, okay? Everything else is supplemental, paratext or subtext. Okay? We want to worship you, our Lord. What are we doing? We're listening for the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. That's why Donald Trump is very significant, because God is t telling you through him to be ready. That's what it means. You want to be ready for the trump. That is, you, you need to see that. It's right in your face, okay? And, uh, okay, I'm going to get about half of this done, then I'm going to take a break, I'll be right back, and then I'm going to finish a short segment lesson today. We're not going to have a, a long lesson today. At least I, I don't plan on having one, but we have just a few items. As we listen to the voice of the Lord, my sheep, they hear my voice, and primarily that's through, through the scriptures here, especially if we look at Hebrews chapter 1, correct? So let's listen to the voice of the Lord in these scriptures. As we get into, uh, we're going to look at John 3, 16, Matthew 6, Revelation, Jeremiah 31, um, maybe Jeremiah chapter 14, now, and Paul, Corinthians, Matthew 10, and Psalm 25, 26, and something like that. Okay, 24, 25, and, uh, and uh, then we're going to bounce to 1, 2, 3, and 4, stuff like that. Psalm 1, 2, 3, and 4. And once we close the book on these, it's over. 
I will go back to the love scriptures a lot because we are going to focus on agape next year, big time, okay? And let's look at our recent history here. As we love the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love the appearing. And uh, we love that Mr. Jesus. Don't ever let us go. We love you, Jesus. We love Jesus Christ with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. All of our energy, all the force that's within us, which you might use for the word glory. Another word for another word for force is glory. Correct. Now we we just added glory to this ministry in terms of. Uh, another piece of vocabulary that we're focusing on. We will not focus on your dictionary, the entire dictionary in this ministry before we shut down. We will focus on a few basic print principles and items, and then it's going to be basic plant shutdown here. This is basically a supplemental ministry for the Christian body. And uh, there's a lot of videos here. You, you could get salvation if you live in uh, Colombia or you live in who knows where, uh, Timbuktu. And you go online. I will give you enough on these videos here to know you're saved, get saved, stay saved, and don't let anyone take your crown from you. That's what the Master said in the book of Revelation. Don't let anyone take your crown from you. That means somebody can take it. Otherwise, he wouldn't say, don't let someone. All you Calvinists just disappeared. Jeremiah, let's get into this as we... Say, I love you, Jesus. And we, you're, you want to give your whole heart to Jesus Christ. You want to put your body on the altar and all of your desires that you had before you became a Christian and lay them on the altar and let them get burnt up as to the will of the Lord. We just finished, uh, what was that, Matthew 11. Where we had the third part of living bread, chronologically in your in your New Testament, chronologically. Your first living bread was repentance. Your second living bread was take up your cross daily, and your third piece of living bread was put my yoke upon you. I'll give you your next piece of living bread next. Uh, uh, soon. We're keeping track of all this chronological work here. We just went through Psalm 1 through 35. We have a uh, a recap of those chapters coming up right here. And uh, it's going to be about 200, 200 uh, uh, concepts here. I got quite a few here. About a hundred here or so. We got we got a hundred. We're not here to cover the waterfront as a Bible teacher or a ministry. The waterfront is going to be covered by your private study and other 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 resources, other Bible teachers, other other friends. But it doesn't mean that you will not cover the waterfront here. You will get enough here to be saved, get saved, and as we might say, stay saved, or as the Master said. Don't let anyone take your crown from you. Paul would say shipwreck, right? Shipwreck. Judas was shipwrecked. The master said, pay heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Judas did not pay attention to what he said. He let the leaven of the Pharisees get to him. He was seduced by having well-dressed clothing, TV preacher lifestyle. A lot of people out there in the world are not going to get saved because they're going to buy into this TV preacher bozo ideology. Where it's okay to be greedy and so forth. Thou shalt not covet doesn't mean anything to me. That's what they're saying. And if you think thou shalt not covet means nothing, then that means that you're basically essentially mentally retarded and you're going downstairs. 
You can't break the Tenth Commandment. You, you, you're toast. Don't ever let us go, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said he would never leave you nor forsake you. He would be with you all the way to the end. And he's going to let his spirit talk to your spirit to let you know that you're never alone and no one can snatch you out of his hand. No one. So this is what we teach here over and over. And we're getting into love now. So we're going to really start hammering home love scriptures here uh, as this ministry closes. This ministry is closing because we basically have covered what... What's basically required of you, which is living bread, the commandments of Jesus Christ, the teachings on the commandments of Jesus Christ. And you can go home. You, you've got what you need. We have this love Jesus music going. And that's what we think about here as... You know, you're on the Isle of Patmos with John, and uh, you're with Jesus Christ, and everyone else might have left you, but whoop de doo and la dee da Cindy turned on me. Frank left me. whoop de doo And la dee da Welcome to the club. Uh, she just sticks closer than her brother. Just look at that in Romans. His spirit bears witness with your spirit. You, 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 you got him. There he is. Emmanuel, God is with you. So uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Show me thy marvelous loving kindness. There you go. You, you got marvelous loving kindness. You own it. Let's love Jesus a little bit more in real time as we get ready for Grand Prix. This ministry is winding down. Uh, the Grand Prix's are going to be the big enchiladas here. Where you can click this on and you're going to get straight scripture. And then I'll give you some commentary at the end. And you don't need commentary uh, as this moves on. The whole point of my teaching is for you to not need commentary. ASAP. So when you hear the scripture, you, that's it, and you're, you're done. And I'll give you enough, I've given you enough groundwork here and a foundation where those of you who have been following along and you've been getting into this vocabulary and these playlists, which flesh out or, or to expound what's, what these uh, terms are, these concepts, you're done here. You, you can take it easy, just have Bible study, and you know what you're reading, and you know what railroad track you're on, you know where you are. You, you have the ability to combine concepts together, line upon line, precept upon precept, to rightly divide it, slice it up, put it back together, and you are now an intellectual. If you follow this ministry to the end, you, you, could, you could just about have a PhD in, in Bible study. It's up to you. We will get into advanced ideas here uh, next year. As this ministry winds down, we're going to have one day a week probably of a 30-minute video where I get into uh, secular academics a little. Biblical geography. and uh, When we start putting all the, the plaster on the building here, the filigree on the... Entablature. What's the word I'm thinking about? Let's go, Jeremiah. Are you ready to go and get into Grand Prix? Because we love the Lord Jesus Christ in real time. Uh, with all of our heart and soul, uh, we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll never turn away from the life of the narrow brick road. If you get off the narrow brick road, you pray and get right back on the narrow brick road. Is that complicated? No, it's not. Now, I, I delineate that for you here, but we're not going to get into that right now. Uh, staying on the narrow brick road. Let's look at Grand Prix Primavera. That means best prize, the, the, the truly best, the top prize. 
And now it's time to start getting into the top prize here. And I'm going to have part one here, part two, etc. And and uh, pretty soon I'll, I'll be done with Grand Prix. I will go through a lot of these Bible books and give you a lot of the most uh, poignant scriptures. And of course, we're not here to, to replace. Uh, reading the entire scriptures by no means. I'm just giving you an opportunity to look at a lot of the major components and a lot of the major ideas in your Bible so that you can become a, a graduate here, okay? There's, there's nothing better than being a graduate. There's nothing better than graduating from what you, what you, what you sought to, to perform with the power of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Lord Jesus Christ, correct? Yeah, you're, you're here to, to become an intellectual, to become a saint. The word means, of course, to be devoted to purity and intelligence. Paul, Paul decided to kind of leave the word discipline alone. Uh, disciple is used by the master quite a few times. We just looked at it. Then all of a sudden, we don't see it anymore, pretty much from Paul. We don't see the word disciple. Well, the word is replaced by servant and by saint, which denotes the same thing. It means the same thing. If you're devoted to purity, then you're devoted to righteousness, and you're devoted to scriptures, and you're devoted to getting in line. You're devoted to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. You're devoted to all of these aspects of what you need to be devoted to. So the word servant is used, and the word uh, saint is used, and, and of course you're a convert, and you're born again, and uh, you are a son and a daughter. We just looked at those two terms in, in Matthew, extremely significant, right? If God calls you son, uh, you, you can't beat that. That's the goal here. And if you're a woman and he calls you daughter, uh, you're smoking. I mean, you're done. This is it. Servanthood is what basically leads to adoption. You put on a servant mind basically first. That's why the master focuses on becoming a servant and not becoming a child. 90% of what the master uh, focuses on is you putting on a servant mind over and over and over again, not adopted mind. I saw a bozo on TV here. He said, yeah, we're, we're, we're not servants. We're children. We're privileged. That's why they're bozos. They're liars and they're basically scum because a lot of them know that they're lying. They know what they're doing. They're probably getting money for it. Who knows what their motives are? Uh, some sort of uh, um, uh, imbecilic narcissism, but the point is, is that uh, the bottom line is, is that we're here to put on learning how to be a servant. You don't worry about adoption. You concern yourself with the commandments of Jesus Christ, which are generally centered on you learning how to be a servant. End of story. Then adoption becomes automatic. You don't put the cart before the horse. Otherwise, the master would not, would not have taught you a, a million ways a Sunday how to be a servant. That's the whole point here. We, we just looked at your first three commandments, basically in living bread. The overarching principles of living bread. What, what were they? Let's go back over this chronology again one more time before we get into Grand Prix. It was repentance and baptism because the kingdom of God is at hand and you can have removal of your sins. Then there was take up your cross and follow me. Love me first uh, or there's no soap. And, and that is demonstrated by you putting on a servant mind and humbling yourself in the sight of the Lord, opening yourself up, not being ashamed and offended at getting to work here on love service for the benefit of human beings to the pleasure of God the Father. End of story. Then the third item of a living bread was take up, uh, put my yoke upon you. All of them deal with submission. That's why you're called an Israelite. Israelite means submission to God. That's what it means. 
You were told what to do. You did it. You didn't, you didn't run your mouth. You, you, you were told what to do, and you did it. That's it. A lot of yip-yap and yippity-yap doesn't mean anything. Okay? When wisdom illuminates a man, it, it causes his stern face to beam. I'm a pretty stern guy most of the time here. Because soul saving is not Mickey Mouse material. Whether you go up or down is not a circus. We, we, we don't have an amusement park here. There are no merry-go-rounds. There are no roller coasters. You know, there, there are no Ferris wheels here. Where you go round and round. Without going anywhere. You, there are no mouse wheels in, in, in a rodent cage. That, that, where, the, where the mice gets a... He gets inside, the mouth gets inside the wheel, and he's spinning around and spinning around, and he's, he's, he's impressing you because he's moving the wheel. But he's not going anywhere. People in the flesh think they're going somewhere. In America, they talk about being successful here. Even, even these presidential candidates are talking about being successful all the time. It's basically asinine and mental retardation. America is basically mentally retarded. The only success we have here in church is serving Jesus Christ. There is no other success. I'm a successful businessman. I'm a successful this. Uh, he's successful. It's asinine. In the church, and where intellectualism is, we teach serving Jesus Christ, shut your mouth, really, and just be quiet. We don't want to hear about you having some sort of success. Because that means that you accomplished something. I accomplished this. I accomplished that. There, there is no boasting in the church. And you can boast in a MAGA meeting, but I don't want to hear your boasting. Now, since these people are applying for a job in public, it, it makes for a, a, a peculiar circumstance uh, psychologically. We understand that. However, I still don't want to hear you brag about anything. And that's the problem with politics, is we have people running for, your, running for a job, and you get, and you get to hire them. So they're going to talk about their ability to perform on the job. Uh, the, the whole presentation is, is ludicrous. Because I, I don't want to hear about your accomplishments. That's the point. Now, obviously, there are peculiar circumstances pertaining to this democratic situation. Uh, but, but the bottom line is, I, we, 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 in the church, we don't want to hear about any accomplishments from any politician. Never. That's the whole point. That's one of the problems with MAG or any political situation. Is well, You have no accomplishments, sir. There's only one accomplishment. That's Jesus Christ. That's it. MAGA stuff is essentially mental retardation. Now, we understand why they're going mentally retarded and, and why they are in error and they're not intellectual because of the public uh, uh, servant position that it is being uh, uh, solicited. We understand that. But essentially, it's, 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 it's non-intellectual stuff. I'm comparing my accomplishments with Joe's accomplishments or Billy's or something. Uh, in, the, in the church, we really don't want to hear any of your accomplishments. And we're happy that you've accomplished something uh, that God would be pleased with. But, but just keep it to yourself is really what this is all about, isn't it? Yes. Paul said boasting is excluded. So it should be excluded. It's just as simple. I guess you might say a politician should come on, on, the, on TV or the web here or the computer, whatever you call it. It's still a TV. There's nothing different than it's still a TV. They got commercials. What's the difference? You pay for it now, but you get more information, or you can manipulate the information. Whereas before, you only had a few channels to turn. Now you have hundreds of channels. But here's the point: we understand that uh, a public servant is, is is being interviewed by the people. However, what we really would like is a sheet of paper or a list of things that have been accomplished by you 
and probably have somebody else read it besides yourself. Or, or we don't want to even say the word accomplishment. We want you to enumerate what you've done. That's what I, that's what I would like from a political scenario. That's, you know, as far as this democratic situation, you tell me what was done and that's all. Don't tell me it was good or bad or nothing. Just tell me I did this, I did this, I did this. Vote for me based upon this criteria. Everyone have a good night. That's a mature Protestant perspective I just gave you. Anything else is really unacceptable. And it's entertainment, and it is getting in the flesh. And it's, it's getting back to being an immature Christian, or not a Christian at all. When you, when you enjoy things that are breaking the laws, and, and, and the statutes, and the teachings of Paul the Apostle, and the Master, then you're entering into a realm of sin. Some of these candidates are cursing and they keep talking about hell all the time and who in the hell and what in the hell and all this. They, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Hell is a very serious place. When you mention it, you should mention it in proper context. I just throw it all over the place. Very similar to mentioning the, the name of Jesus all over the place. I, I just watched a movie, part of a movie and the, and the guy said, uh, Jesus, my hot dog didn't have mustard or something. He, he's, he's saying the holy name of Jesus Christ, and he's, he's using it flippantly like you use a dog's bone or something. That's when you know you're in the end of the world. That's one of the Ten Commandments. You, you, don't, you don't mention the name of the Lord in vain. You, you don't do that. Yet these idiots in Hollywood, they do it all the time. Well, listen, you know, they're the ones that are doing it, and hopefully it's not you. We mention the name of Jesus Christ. We stop and we think and we reflect upon the Master, His death, burial, and resurrection, and it saved me. And you mention that name. We're going to praise right now. You just mentioned Jesus. We're going to praise And if you're going to mention that name flippantly around me, you need to get your rear end out of my face. Let's put it that way. One way or another, either I'm leaving or you're leaving. Somebody's leaving. We're not playing here. Some of you think that uh, these TV bozos or people, you know, these clowns or these circus people that are on TV or whatever, you, a lot of you think that that's Christianity, you know, or, or you know, uh, Trump represents Christianity, or Vivek, or these people on these computers. They don't represent Christianity. They want, they want a job, and they're into money a lot. That's quite obvious. They're wearing $75 shirts and so forth. Uh, they're enjoying their money here, and, and uh, I really don't want to see any of them, honestly. I'm curious as to what they plan on doing with the country. Uh, a chicken can figure that out, but I, I really don't want to see them. I only want to see church people who worship Jesus Christ. That's all I want to see. People have repented and they're serving Jesus Christ. That's who I want to see. Period. End of story. Now, can you be curious about what's going on in the world? That's not my point. I'm curious about what, they're, what, they, what they plan on doing. Because it's my, it's my country. But essentially, I don't want to see them. That, that's my point. I, I, don't, I don't need to see them. I need to see the people in the church who are hurting and to bind up their brokenhearted. That's what I need to see. We have people in the church fellowship over here, and, and, and they're hurting, and that's my job. They're not uh, all of this grandiloquence and all of this stuff going on about people who, who say they, they like Thomas Jefferson or so forth. I, I'm glad you like Thomas Jefferson. We're happy you like Thomas Jefferson. We sure are. And, and what he wrote down and all of that, and Thomas Paine and, you know, the, federal, the Federalist Papers and George Washington, we're happy that you're excited about these people. 
But we don't need any of it, essentially. I don't need any of it. I don't need Thomas Jefferson for squat. I don't need Donald Trump for squat. I'm going to die whether Trump goes in office or not, or whoever goes in office. I'm going to die. There's going to be a funerals. Are they, going to, are they going to stop funerals, people? No. That's your real problem. It's not Joe Biden or bad politicians. Your real problem is death. And what we teach you when we go to church is to make sure that you've got some sort of fire insurance. And that's what we have here. We talk about fire insurance here and loving the brethren. That's what we talk about here over and over and over again. And I really don't want to hear anything else. Now, in an election cycle, we are curious because we live in this country as to what these people plan on doing. There's nothing wrong with being curious and be concerned about people who are in charge of you and your money and your, your police department. That, that's not my point. My point is I really don't need to know. That's the bottom line. I don't need to know. What I need to know is, is am I saved, saved, wonderfully saved? That's what I need to know. Because before I, before I heard about the church, I was going to fire. In my own sin, I own my, I own my sin, so I was going to fire. When you own your own sin, it, it is imputed unto you, you're dead. You're over, you're going to fire. Okay, we're here to rejoice in the fact that we're not going to fire, that, 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 that somebody loved you and died for you, and we're going, to, we're going to expound these ideas over and over and over again, and that's what we're going to do here. I just put a couple of videos up on politics. I have I got 2,000 videos up in this institution, and uh, five of them are on politics or general uh, political uh, d debates as to political parties, the history of the United States, uh, what, what is our role in this voting situation, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I only have like five videos. That's, that's it. Because, because we're still a part of the machine. It is a democracy. However, for the most part, we don't need to have nothing to do with it at all. There is no protocol. The protocol is the church saving souls. That's the protocol. Thinking about being with Jesus Christ, that's our protocol. I love you, Jesus. That's, that, that's what we talk about here all day long, and we'll never stop doing it. Okay? Let's get to Grand Prix. I'm going to have to have... Uh, let's go ahead and read Grand Prix. I will repeat part one two or three times, so there's no problem. Uh, all of these sections of uh, Primavera here, letter L in the playlist here. All you got to do is find letter L and you found Grand Prix. Uh, I'm going to have two or three versions at least. There'll be quite a few parts to Grand Prix. Um, I would say 15 probably. At least. More along the lines of 20. And there'll be uh, an hour or so apiece. They will have the scripture reading. Then I'll have a commentary at the end uh, spontaneously. Okay? So then all you got to do is listen to the scriptures and just shut the video off. That's the goal here. The goal here is for you to listen to scriptures and that's it. Not to have listen to commentary. Commentary is something that, that, that's supposed to be supplemental. It's supposed to be something that helps you understand but you don't, you don't want to listen to it that, that much. You don't want to listen to too much commentary. You want to start learning what the scriptures mean and read them and then shut it down. That's the whole goal here. That's the, that's the goal here, okay? Let's go through them. We got a hundred here. Let's go. For God so loved my Father, they will know that I have loved you. I have loved thee with loving kindness I have drawn thee if you love me love never fails love serve the greatest of these 
for with the heart man believest. He that loveth mother, father more than me. Obey the gospel. Fulfill the royal law of liberty. The spirit of truth cometh for sin, righteousness, and judgment. O oh my God, for thou art the God of my salvation. Remember, O oh Lord, thy tender mercies. Thy loving kindness is better. The meek will he guide. The meek will inherit the earth. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Lead me to the rock. As the deer panteth for the water brook. Keep his covenant and testimony. Gather unto me all those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. For thy name's sake, pardon me. For my sin is great. The earth is the Lord. He founded it upon the sea. He found he, his throne was founded upon the waters. Blessed is the man that walketh. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, for the Lord knoweth the path of the righteous. He that sitteth in the heavens will laugh. I have anointed my king on the hill of my holiness. I will declare the decree. Thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. O Lord, my glory. O Lord, the lifter of mine head. Ask of me, and I will give thee the very ends of the earth as thy possession. Be wise now, serve the Lord. Kiss the sun. I laid me down and slept. I will not be afraid of ten thousands. Arise, O Lord. Salvation belongeth to the Lord. Have mercy upon me and hear me. Know that the Lord hath, hath set apart him, him that is godly for himself. Stand in awe. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness. Commune with your own heart. Be still and know that I am God. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than I lay me down and sleep and slept or sleep. Thou makest me to dwell in safety. Those are 50 of the biggest monsters in your Bible. Now, I've cut some of those sentences in half. They're uh, subordinate clauses and so forth, but I'm doing it on purpose. It's going to prompt your brain to finish the Scripture. and You're going to finish the Scripture. You're going to learn how to read parts of Scripture and finish them yourself. It's going to help you memorize these Scriptures. For God so loved what? The world. The key is so loved. So loved is the key. 
What does so loved mean? It means a lot of love. I'm here to help you focus on operative words here in scriptures, such as we just looked at my father. That's an extremely significant uh, for two words. My father. It's your father. This is smoking. This is a smoking time this ministry. I'm going to tell you something. We're going to shut down. That's it. I'm giving scriptures. Uh, I do have a virgin coming up where it's just scriptures, and I'm going to shut down. But uh, Which is where we're headed with this. This is the first one I've done, and I'm, I'm warming up to it, but pretty soon it's going, to be, it's, it's going to be scriptures, and then you can just shut it off. But after the scriptures, I will go into, shortly, a commentary on these scriptures that I just gave you. Not today. Or at least not right now. I'm taking a break, and I'm going to come back to uh, with you with 51 through 100, okay? With a new video. And pretty soon when you go to Primavera here, when you go to Grand Prix, letter L, it's going to be a lot of scriptures. And if you want to hear the commentary on them, you can, or just shut the video off. And of course, we're supposed to get to the place where you just listen, you listen to the scriptures, think about them. Because I'm not here to replace scriptures with commentary. And I think that a lot of you understand that. We had to go through this because many of you, like me, we, we, we need vocabulary review. I did very well in college. But I still need reviews. I'm still a human. I'm still a, a, a bozo. I'm still just Joe Blow on many levels here. And I need, I need, I need to study. I need to remember. I need to work. You know, I work here. We had some uh, dictionary work here earlier. Paul said, "A workman. That's you and me." What parable is that? The parable of the sower. How important is the parable of the sower pertaining to commandments? You are fulfilling the royal law by studying. You're obeying the gospel. You didn't just hear the word, you're doing the word. And that makes you a what? A winner. Want to be a winner or a loser? You hang around me, I'm going to make you a winner. I push people to work hard. As an instructor of K through 12, when I was in the aerospace industry, uh, I pushed people around me to do good work. And uh, in my little office there at Ford Aeronutronic, I had an office, which was an interactive office. It wasn't my own office, but I was basically the supervisor there uh, for that department. And I trained people and showed them how to do things properly pertaining to the job I had there. And some people came into my office, and they were sloppy workers, and they made me mad. I, I didn't like those guys. One guy came in there, and he, he was really sloppy, and I basically told him, why are you so sloppy? And then he, like, threatened me or something. That guy was worthless. Some people are just no good. Now, we hope they get saved, but at that time in his life, he was no good. He was just, he was sickening. I, I said, don't you take seriously what you're doing over there, dude? You're, you know, you're... you're the hole doesn't call for a five-mile hole in that part. What are you doing over there? Guy's on the drill press. He, he's damaging the part on purpose. Uh, and I'm going, what, who, who hired this clown? You say, Jeremiah, you're, you're very disciplinary. Well, if you don't like this ministry, go, go, go to a TV bozo or something that wants to eat ice cream all day. And, and, uh, and put on pink shoes or something. You go hang around that guy or whoever you want to hang around. It doesn't bother me. Oh, you're, you're too stern. Get out of here. You know, listen, if, if people who don't want to be disciplined get, get lost. We, we have time off here. I, I, I'm not a super disciplined person. It's just an undisciplined. You know, I, I don't freak out over discipline. You know, the, the, what's that nice movie, that classic movie, Jane Eyre, where, where uh, 
her friend dies at the beginning beginning of the movie because the guy is too disciplinary. He's over. He's he's too much discipline. We we don't have that kind of attitude here, but we do have a discipline attitude. One of the Bible teachers that I used to hang out with, he just passed away, and he called me up here a couple of, a year or so ago, and he said, you know, I think that this ministry is a little too, you know, you're going too hard on work and vocabulary, and we can't, we. we we can't exceed 10 vocabulary words. That's too much work, man. I said, listen, bro, you, you, you kind of do what you want to do. And I hope, I hope you're successful in whatever methodology you want. You know, whatever, um, whatever pedagogy you choose, uh, more power to you. But I don't think 34 terms is too much for an, for an adult. You know, if you think 32, 34 terms are too much, then, then that's, your, that's your opinion. We, we, we're working on 34 items here. I, I don't see that as insurmountable. Oh, 34 is too much. God, doggone it. Oh, and there's subtext too? Oh. <laughs> Crybabies. Now, that, that Bible teacher is a very nice guy. I'm not putting him down. I'm just telling you that my attitude is is, is, is I'm not going to tell you that, that your three words, you know, you say grace every five seconds. That's all you say to your, to your uh, you know, to your flock and people who listen to you teach. Grace this and grace that, and, and which kind of gave me the impression that's what that Bible teacher was doing. He kept saying grace over and over again. The only word they know in that church is grace. That's all they know. I have news for you. For you to be an intellectual and a mature Christian, you're going to have to know more than word, the word grace. Once again, I, I had nothing negative to say to that Bible teacher, assistant pastor, whatever. I think it was assistant pastor or something, but uh, I, don't, I don't have anything negative to say to him. He can go his own merry way. It doesn't bother me. But I don't think 34 concepts to study is too much for an adult. I just don't think so. And for those of you out there, it's, we have a lot of people who are uh, um, uh, what we might call uh, cognitively, uh, uh, you know, you were born with, with an inability to understand a lot of information, a congenital, congenitally is the word they use. Listen, I, I don't believe, I, I, I taught special ed. Let me share something with you. I taught special ed. I told my students that God is bigger than your problem. Basically, we, we, we don't have a no-can-do attitude here. You will succeed, you will do fine, and we don't want to hear anything else. But, but, but I'm having problems. Uh, I was told this and I was told that. Well, you just forget about what you were told. Do you have to believe everything somebody tells you? I'm special ed. I'm, I'm, I'm lower than the other students. No, somebody told you that you were lower than the other students. You're not lower than the other students. You're having some problems right now, and you're going to overcome them. Basically, keep your mouth closed, get, get to work, and call yourself a winner. And that's all we talk about here. I don't want to talk about losing around here. I'm losing. I'm a loser. I'm losing. No, you're a winner, and you're going to win. Get to work, and let's go. If, if, if there's one surefire way of losing, it's quitting. That, that's the whole point. You know, if you quit, you are a loser. The only loser here is a quitter. Albert Einstein flunked his first math class. I'll say it again. Albert Einstein in college flunked his first math class. Did you know that? I'm part motivational speaker here as a Bible teacher. We have, we have a lot of young people who, who browse these channels. They usually browse through halfway through the video and they shut it off because their attention span is too, it's just natural for young people to have a short attention span. They like animals and, 
and they like uh, purple dinosaurs, and they like music that's really fast, where they can surf and dance and bounce around off walls. But we train them to learn to sit still, endure a, a, a one-hour class, listen, pay attention, take notes, use your brain. That's basically what I teach here. Learn how to be disciplined, sit still, deal with um, uh, what you might call a boring time, uh, whatever, and deal with it. Because the results are your, your brain is going to be enriched and you're going to be a better person for it. Uh, early sociology, uh, in 1975, they called it deferred gratification. There was a whole chapter on deferred gratification in 1975 or so in colleges in the sociology book. A lot of life is deferred gratification. For you young, young people out there, it's best for you to get stay away from fornication and just wait for the right guy or gal and wait. Go, go to bed and shut your mouth, have some ice cream and go to bed. You don't need beer, wine, weed, drugs or nothing. You don't need romance before marriage. Uh, that's a lie from hell, from a rock and roll band. And, and they're going to hell. All these rock and roll bands that tell you to do this, commit suicide. I know what's going on. I, I, I taught young people for a, a half of my life. I know what's in their music. All of these people who promote suicide to children, they're going to roast in hell forever. They, they, they'll never get out of hell for dragging children into suicide. I see the albums. I'm, 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 I'm not a bozo. I know what you're listening to, and I know the video games you play. Most of it's from the devils. Satan has taken over this country, and that's why they're voting 40% Democrat right now. They're zombies. We're surrounded by zombies because people who are in charge are devils. And that's what happens when devils are in charge. Just ask Socrates. I'll be back with 51 through 100 momentarily. And uh, uh, I will have Grand Prix here without any uh, commentary and so forth. Um, uh, and I will label it for you. Because that's really where we're going with this. And of course, we just went through... Uh, uh, John 3.16, Matthew 6, Revelation uh, 2.3, Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah 14, Corinthians, Paul 13, and so forth. 1 Corinthians 13, Matthew chapter 10, and we went through Psalm 25 and a little bit of 24, I think. And that's what we've been referencing here, okay? Right now. We also went to Psalm uh, chapter 1, 2, and 3, and so forth. I'll reference those scriptures later, but that, that's, that's the gist of it, okay? I'll be right back with uh, part two of Grand Prix, part one. Okay? Now what we're doing is, is we're just taking this ministry from where we started, which was, we started with uh, beauty as being a big theme here because of this new technology, these images, these beautiful high definition pictures going around the world, looking at it and thinking about Jesus Christ as the creator of such beautiful things as a big thing in this ministry. Romans chapter one, you, you are without excuse when you see all of this beauty and cleanliness to not understand that God demands purity and holiness and organization. He demands it. And, 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 and if he doesn't get it, he will discard you. When you see a beautiful scenery, the reason why it's beautiful is because it's cohesive, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's organized, it's beautiful, and it's clean. And if anything disturbs that scenery, it will be discarded. You should, you should know that when you, by looking at these landscapes. That's why I have landscapes here as the main thing that because, uh, here as far as beauty goes is because you should see that, by golly, uh, whoever created that, is pure. That, that's the first thing you should see. And they're not playing with purity and cleanliness. They're not playing. 
Or you might say the devil's filthying things up. That, that doesn't mean that God demands pure. Okay? Just because you see filth. And when New Jerusalem comes down out of heaven in 66.21 in your Bible, you'll see that God demands beauty. And anything that gets in the way is gone. Liars, murderers, thieves, stinky people are gone. You'll never see them again. What's one of the big scriptures in your Bible? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He makes everything beautiful in his time. God demands everything to be beautiful. I'm telling you right now. That's why we focused on beauty here a lot. Remember, beauty is not, a, we're not overdoing beauty here. No, we're not. We're getting into the Holy Spirit and love right now and next year. The spirit of truth and love. We're getting into that big time now. And we, and we just hammered home, what is living bread? The master said, if you eat this bread. We've been hammering that home till the cows come home. And now we are headed into love and we're fusing it all together, which is beauty, heaven, purity, living bread, denial, take up your cross, put on a servant mind, and now we're going into love. I know what I'm doing here. I saw a plan. And we, 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 we have a lot available here. We, we want to know the basics of wisdom. What is wisdom? Not deeply, but in a, on, a, on, a, on a cursory level, what is wisdom? We talked about some of the basics of what is high love, agape, the term. We're going back into that. We, we talk about sound doctrine a little here. It's every principle in your Bible. We talked about grace and mercy. Uh, we really hammered those two terms home. We talked about what the basics of faith is in this ministry. Uh, what are you putting your confidence in? How many different confidences are there? What's the difference between faith and hope, or the blessed hope? Um, is love part of faith all the time? Is there saving faith and not saving faith? Wait, 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 you just about cover the waterfront here. Okay? You should be intellectuals at this point. And I'm happy, to, I'm happy to produce them. Half of my life was producing intellectuals. Young humans that God created who were curious and they wanted to be intelligent people and they smiled at you in the morning and it made you uh, happier than anything in the world. I had the best job that any human has ever had. Being a Bible teacher, binding up broken hearts in church and teaching young Americans about basics of mathematics, and they're excited to do so. And to be a supervisor, and to be responsible, and even to the point of protecting the children, I, I, I relish the opportunity. It, it was a privilege. American children, before they get into garbage, uh, before they get infected by rock and roll, uh, uh, rap crap, uh, before they get involved in uh, uh, secular humanism, uh, uh, religions around the world, and before they get into all of that and they're Quakers, they're sound as a dollar and they're not infected yet by the world. They're basically innocent. That's why we as adults want to protect them uh, and give them extra care because they're innocent. Now when you become an adult and you repent and you're baptized, now you're innocent. Your sins are gone too. an hour video I'm done I'll be I'll be right back with the second half of Grand Prix and uh, that's it for me today we're a short day today we've got lots of work here I, I know a lot of you work uh, even on Sunday I spend a lot of time working every day just about 
uh, you know, I might slow down a little bit because kind of Sunday. The Sunday in America is usually the day after the Saturday evening post here in America. And you've read your little magazine about the community in the world with Norman Rockwell or something. And, you, and you, your Saturday's over and you had some ice cream as an American and you woke up and you, and you had some church activities on Sunday. I don't usually attend church that much at all uh, since I started this ministry because it's taking up all of my time now here. And Pastor Tom just passed away recently, and that was my church contact, basically. And we're really into this ministry here, wrapping it up. I really want to finish this ministry where I only come online once a week, okay? That's what I'm doing here. We're wrapping this up. This Grand Prix is, is signaling the end of the ministry, basically. And it's kind of sad a little bit because I've had a wonderful labor of love here. It's been hard work, but it's been, it's been love labors. It's rewarding spiritually and to the soul. Bless my soul with all of this. You know, he has made me glad. I thank my God. I just gave you some of the bottom line scriptures that are I'm very happy to close this ministry out with. And uh, I will give you a lot of bottom line scriptures before we shut down. And they'll be available under Grand Prix. Because as I mentioned, I'll say it one more time. Grand Prix is where church really should be, uh, where you focus your time on. This is where you should focus. On for God so loved. You stop and you think about these Prime directives here. All the paths of the Lord are mercy. Everywhere God goes, he's looking to forgive people uh, even though he knows who they are. In other words, he's always he's always ready to walk with you, along with you and other people, and he knows who you were. That's what mercy means. Mercy means you're acknowledging error. But you still care. Either something was done to you personally, or the person is a sinner and they've done something wrong and they have hurt some human being. If you hurt a human being one time, you are disqualified from hanging around Jesus Christ. I'll say it again. If you hurt a person one time in your whole life, you were insensitive and you caused them any kind of pain at all, you'll never see Jesus Christ. You're disqualified. Goodbye. Jesus only hangs around people who are pure, that's why the Father and Son are good friends, you might say, because neither one of them will ever sin. So they hang out together, and they never think of sin, never. Every human has done something wrong, therefore Jesus Christ cannot hang out with you. You, you thought about hurting someone one time in your life, and you can never hang around Jesus Christ. Because he knows that you hurt someone's feelings one time, and that's all it took for you to be toast. You're toast. God hates sin. He hates it when people hurt people. That's half of the point here of this ministry that I drive home for those of you who have been listening Oh, that's basically what this is over and over again as far as one of the basic principles of Protestantism is that human beings basically are worthless because they've done one thing wrong, two things wrong. You're, you're, God, God has no need for you whatsoever. All it took was one miss of the bullseye. That's all it took. And, and the, the, the successful legal removal 
of that error, that sin, that harm uh, was done by the Lord Jesus Christ. He successfully, legally removed it when you came to him. It's gone. He can't see it. There's no way you can hang around Jesus Christ unless all of your sins are covered. He can't see them. He's pure. He can't see trash. He can't hang around trash. It's kind of like somebody come up to your house and they're, and they're eating dinner with you and they're talking about they just murdered a, a kindergarten class or something and you're eating dinner with them and they're laughing and joking. Hey, Billy, how you doing? Oh, pass me the butter. Oh, the bread tastes really good. Thanks for the bread. No problem, Billy. Yeah, I, I just murdered 20 children. And I tortured them, and they were screaming, and uh, pass me some more butter. <laughs> How are you going to feel? Okay? I'll be right back. I'm going to have to charge a little bit here myself. I'm thinking out loud. I apologize. That's it. Jeremiah's going to be back with 51 through 100 later. Shalom.